Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and we have a new quad today, a new version of the King. <gasps> it's about to drop. Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we are going to review, unbox, and all that good stuff the new version of the ET 115 by King Kong. So, this is the version 2, guys, version 2, not version 1. So this is the quad that we recommend everybody who's getting just started into the FPV, drone racing, freestyle, whatever you want to call it, quad racing. Many reasons why we offer that we recommend this to new uh, pilots. Flies fairly slow and it's got these prop guards and the price is pretty good. Yes. So you guys, if you look at our pre previous videos or pretty much any YouTube video about the King Kong uh, ET series, it's recommended by pretty much everyone. Everyone loves this thing. I have very, very few gripes about this I've quad. I've never heard anybody complain. Um, so if you want to know what's different between the V1 and V2, you got to stay tuned and watch this to the end. Okay. <laughs> All right, if you're new to this channel, Grayson Hobby is a shop that sells airplanes and drones and cars right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And this channel is dedicated to reviews of new products and tips and tricks. Everything you see in our showroom is on our website and vice versa. Everything chips from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. What we have here is the ET version two of the 115. But what's in the box here is the quad itself. Got an extra white body, an extra red body, and a classic body. I'm not sure why they included that one, but cool. This is three cell, 600 milliamp. It's a 50C battery up with new. an XT30. XT30. That is one thing they did change on that. We'll get into that later. So what's in here is spare props, more spare props. So according to the manual, you're gonna get one set of clear Props 2035s, it's right there you see. And then you're gonna get one set of random color quad uh, props with some battery straps and some screws and stuff. Random color, clear. Yeah, these are shorter screws for the props if you're not gonna run the heat sinks and uh, extra battery bands. You're gonna get some stickers for the body, nice little color manual here, that's nice. And this little pamphlet is regarding the receiver. So if you're gonna get the Free Sky one or the AC900 receiver, it talks about how to bind the receiver. So that's pretty cool that it comes with that. All right, if you lose your manual, you can do it like I did, because I lost my manual. Get it I online. printed mine out, and the link is below on the manual. All right, what makes this version dose? Okay, so the first most important thing is the fact that it's a three cell uh, quad, not a two cell. The version one was two cell only. This is version three, so what they've done to make it version three is to lower the KV of the motors. Um, the motors are now 5,500 KV versus 7,500 KV. So we have um, lower RPM motors at the higher voltage equals out to about the same uh, performance wise, but it allows you to run three cell, which a lot of people said, hey, I like the quad, but I don't wanna buy two cell batteries. I have a bunch of three cells from various other projects, um, quads, etc." So now they have a three cell version specifically for that. Now they did do a major overhaul on this. This is not, um, electronically they've completely changed. The flight stack is completely different from the version one. Uh, I believe the camera is the same as the version one and the VTX is the same. So our flight stack is no longer the same. Um, let me actually grab one of those so I can show you guys. Oh, and by the way, that's a good point. And we have all the spare parts for you guys yeah. who damage them, crash them in the water, all that good stuff. So Betaflight OSD, which is a huge improvement. That was the really the only gripe I really had about this, the version one. It didn't have OSD. And at this point in time, I kind of think everything should have OSD. Right. Um, when inductric size quads, tiny whoops are having Betaflight OSD, it's time for the bigger ones to have it. There's no excuse for that. The, also, another thing they did is plug-in connectors for the receiver. So instead of solder pads, a lot of guys were complaining, hey, I want to change the receiver going from uh, Spectrum or FlySky to FreeSky, et cetera, and vice versa. Um, they were trying to solder and they weren't good at soldering, so they are pulling the pads off. Um, so now they have a plug-in connector for the camera, they have a plug-in connector for the VTX, I'm sorry, not the VTX, but receiver as well. So that makes things a little bit nicer there. Um, the ESC has also got an upgrade. This is a 12 amp ESC that's three cell capable versus the 10 amp ESC. So we got a beefier speed control. Um, it looks like it's made better, to be honest with it. To me, I think it's uh, just, it looks like higher quality. Over they now come with aluminum standoffs. Yes, the standoffs inside that were plastic before, they are now a metal, um, they're rubber isolated in the bottom and they got metal standoffs in there and you can probably see it from here. I don't know if you guys can see it in there. Yep, we can see it. So you'll see that they're using a metal screw flight stack. Um, so it's a little stronger. They got rubber, rubber isolation um, O-rings on it to keep uh, the vibrations out of the flight controller. So help it fly that just a little bit smoother, um, which not that the version one had any issues with that, but it's just a little bit extra. extra. Right, yeah. Here's the buzzer has been mounted into the the actual body here. So the buzzer is in here um, Mounted vertically, so it's very loud. It doesn't get tucked up in the body and hidden away or anything like that Not that you had issues with hearing the old one, but it's just a little bit nicer there because it's purposely put there 
All right, one thing that the manual says, well, it says the camera is adjustable. The only way I can see adjusting it is if you're using the original body, it's more straightforward than if you use this one. There's no extra spots in there to move the camera around. It's fixed so, in my opinion. Regardless, I think the camera angle on is pretty good for what it is. Right, so perfect. I wouldn't, it's a wide angle lens and all that. Um, so don't worry about the camera angle. Yeah. One thing they did put on this is these little metal caps. Yes. Um, there's two purposes for that. Right. One, um, the screws go into the motor, the motor gets hot, the screws transfer the heat to these little aluminum heat sinks. Um, so as they're spinning, they're catching air in these little pockets, and guess what? It's kind of like a heat sink fin cooling it. Okay. Um, so it should, in theory, help the motors run cooler because it's more metal to dissipate the heat to, mm -hmm. as well as getting something to catch and cool down. You do change props, and you decide, like I did on mine, to not use them. Um, I decided to try it without it because I wanted to see if the motors got hot on a hot day, etc. Um, I didn't see really any need to run them. However, if you do that, these screws are longer. If you do not put the metal heat sinks back on, you have to use the shorter screws that come in the bag, um, this bag. All right. If you don't do that, you will destroy your motors, you will kill your motors, and you will be buying new motors because that is not under warranty. And guess what? We, we have motors. motors. <laughs> so. This a little heads up there, guys. If you do change props, either leave the stock screws and the heat sinks on it or use the shorter screws. Be careful of the screw length. That is something that I think is gonna catch a couple people out there. Okay, so moving to the rear. Yeah, now the other thing this has over the version one is a programmable Betaflight OSD LED. So you have an LED on the back of this that you can program, you can adjust different settings, etc. cetera, um, through Betaflight and you can make it like a LiPo, like if the battery's getting low, it'll start flashing, you can change your default color, so if you have multiple people flying, et cetera, you can kind of like use it as a tail light to know who's who. Okay. Um, but it's a programmable LED through Betaflight, which cool. is just another feature that they didn't have on the version one. So um, I'm on, I have my modes. You can program it such as like, uh, like if you go angle mode, acro mode, horizon mode, and you want to see it for line of sight flying, yes, you could have it um, tell you different colors, et cetera. It's pretty much fully programmable within the realms of Betaflight. So while we're in the back end, uh, I know we briefed earlier, but let's go over that. that yes, connector. XT30 connector. This is a high current connector because it's, um, assuming they're expecting higher amp draws, et cetera, with the three cell. Um, but now again, it's a three, uh, XT30 connector instead of JST, which is better. It can handle higher current. So beta flight, how and do you need to and all that good stuff? And well, is it gonna be a pain in the ass? Like last time? The version one that had this body, there was no access for the USB. Um, that's something they did on the redesign of this body. So now we are able to plug in a USB cord without taking the body off. Yay, that um, was my biggest, that was my biggest beef. Yes. Because every time I want to go to Beta Flight, I just said, screw it, I can't do it. Yeah, so now I'm you can connect it. to the computer, you can do updates, you can change PIDs, etc., all through Beta Flight. Um, on the side there. Now, in order to bind it, you can technically, if you get like a toothpick or something like that, you can get down in there and push the receiver button on it. I would probably take the top off. At least off for the first time, push. take it off yeah. and then you're good to go. First pack, we're gonna do a couple of speed tests, which is we'll go around, and we're gonna see how long it flies. Um, Cause everyone's gonna ask, they, they wanna know how long it's gonna fly. Um, we got the radar gun, sound was off, but we got the radar gun passes at, um, what did I say? 69 miles an hour? It was the fastest we got, yeah. 69 miles an hour for those little guys. So I do not recommend it inside. Uh, I'm a minute and 26 into the flight. Okay. So how does this fly? Uh, tell us about a little bit of how it flies. pretty good. Um, I think I can actually feel a little bit of the weight, like the three cell battery versus the two cell setup. Uh huh. I can feel a little bit more, feels like it flies a little heavier. Um, the, they are lower KB motors, so I haven't done the math, but I'm assuming with the lower KB and the extra voltage, it averages about to the same RPMs of the motor. Um, amp draw might be a little lower overall. I'm not sure. Uh, this doesn't have a current sensor on it, so I'm not sure. Gotcha. But um, it flies pretty good. See, so you, you're at good. over two minutes right now, right? Uh, two, two minutes. minutes, eight seconds right now. And that's what the, looking at the... Um Timer on the OSD. And we just did speed test, so I was right. really in the throttle. So, so our first what four passes? Yeah, was ridiculously fast. That's for sure. I hope I got that on the camera. All right, so you're at over three minutes. That's pretty good for the pretty aggressive flying we're doing here. Yeah. Now this is the first charge on this battery too, so I'm running the brand new battery a little hard. I usually don't do that on new batteries, and these trees are really low over here. So it looks like it's going to be the way that beeper's going. Looks like you probably done, push yeah. out a three and a half minute flight. Probably for most people, probably going to push out a four minute flight because they're not going to again. They're not going to go full throttle. 
for the first few passes well, I'm here. really good. I'm getting it really low. Yeah, you are flying. Look for now, how the motor? I forgot to ask you about that. Motors are not hot at all. I mean, they're lukewarm, but they're no hotter than like the two cell version and all that. Now this battery. Let's see that battery here. It's a little, it's a little warm. It's a little warm. Uh, um, it's a little warm, not too bad. I've I've held hotter battery. Typically, battles. I, I typically, it's definitely warmer I, than the two cell. <laughs> I don't like to fly in that hard in the first pack, but uh, oops, oh yeah. well. Constant beeping. Yeah, there's kind of stages to the low voltage alarm. It's got your couple beeps as you punch the throttle, and then right. it starts getting more consistent. So the faster it gets beeping, the, right. the lower, the more critical it is. I guess you'd say. So I guess what you're saying is normal. So when you take off and it's like you're flying about a minute or so, and you give it full throttle and it beeps once or twice, that's normal, right? Yeah, if you're, I mean, depending on if the battery's old or sagging right. or anything like that case. Yeah, sometimes if you get a beep while you punch it kind of thing, I'm not too concerned about that. Right. Um, that might mean your alarm might be a little, a little high. Right, but that, um, that is normal because we get customers ask about that um, on the older versions that they think that the battery's dead or the thing's defective. That's normal. What's not normal is to be consistently If it's consistently beeping. Hear a beep, beep, beep while you're hovering and stuff like that, yeah, time to That's land. That's time to land. Yeah. All right, so there's a couple of, I call them three stages. You get your... Your punch out beep, your hey, you're getting low beep, and then a hey, critical get a land beep. Yeah. Pretty good? All right. Pretty much. Since we talked about it, we might as well show you guys. All right, so you just slowly lift up on it. You don't want to pull anything because there's wires. Ooh. Looks like a little more going on in this one. It's a little, one. yeah, a little more to work with here. Um, there is a plug in the back for the buzzer and the lights. You can unplug it there. That way it'll give you more room to work with. Okay. And then un I'm going to unplug the camera as well. All right, here's our canopy. We have our camera. And we have our buzzer and we have our LED. Looks like it all just slides right in there. Camera, um, kind of tilt the body forward and then pop it out. So that was pretty quick. That was pretty easy actually. And the wires are gonna face down. So do the opposite to install. Put the camera in the little slot and then kind of pop it in place. Again, pretty easy. There's not much to getting that in there. The buzzer looks like it's got the molded like tabs. So you kind of push those apart. So okay. I literally just, the plastic's malleable, so you can just bend okay, it. So just and then it out the there. LED, I would assume just lifts out right as well. Out. Yeah, like plastic hole's pretty good. All right, yeah. so. so you, just put, you basically just spread yeah. it all out. So I'm just gonna go the opposite roll. order. I'm gonna push the buzzer in. LEDs with the wires facing down. Uh, camera wires face down as well. And it's in. Oh, that's pretty easy. Yeah, it's easy. All right, so let me show the flight stack before we put that on. Okay. So, so let's, he, here's, on let's talk about the elf in the room right there. The non this is the sky. AC900 receiver. Yeah. Um, it has a bind bend like a free sky. However, it can be changed between Fataba or D16, depending off if it's a red or green LED. So definitely take note of that when you're binding. So you're not going to, why can't I get this to bind? Because it's in the wrong mode. Um, the camera plugs in. Not only does it plug in... Um, in line but it also plugs in directly on the flight controller which is nice because that way you have two different places to disconnect um, the receiver plugs in versus being soldered in so that's nice if you ever want to change the receiver out to a uh, cough cough real free sky LED and the buzzer plug in as well the flight stacks hold in held in by metal lock nuts versus the plastic screws um, there's a bootloader button right there USB ports on there. So we don't have any wires soldered from top to bottom like the old version. It actually does have a little plug that um, if you ever take the flight stack apart, it would unplug straight up and then the it's wires pins, are there. Right? Are there yeah, it's pins versus okay. a wire harness. Like Diatone uses a wire harness to go between the top and bottom stack. They use uh, uh, pins that are lined up. Definitely different colors make these things look way different. Way yeah, it gives you more variety if, whether you want to go, you know, now the red props are not included. I put those on because I got the red body. I just thought it looked cool. So these Very are cool. actually props I bought for it. Uh, going back to, I know they make the um, different sizes. Would that, could I put the old version on there? Uh, yeah, the guards, even though these are white, they're the same guards as the original 115. So okay. it's the same di dimensions. Um, they do interchange. So if you want to change the black guards, you could buy a set of black guards and props or whatever okay. um, and change it over. All right, so there it is. This has become our, my new favorite quad. This is they just took a quad that was a blast to fly and improved it on several aspects that everyone, you know, that was all the negatives that you really found on it, I would say they improved upon. They made it, people wanted to fly three cell because it's a more popular battery to find. They made it three cell. XT30 connectors were more popular. They made it XT30. The USB port you couldn't get to. They made a USB port accessible. Believe it or not, the three cell, the XT30, that wasn't the biggest gripe for me. That was that freaking hole. Every time I wanted to oh, yeah. go to US, uh, have to take it apart, take it and apart, to, yeah. and a lot of times I wouldn't do it. I would just fly it, crap well, it. Away. And on the version one, it had no OSD, so if you wanted to change your rates or anything on the fly, you couldn't do it. There, there right. was um, now with Betaflight OSD, you don't really even need to connect it to Betaflight after then. You can go in through the menus and change yep. it through the OSD. Um, but 
for those that want to do it the old school way of on the computer, old school, you can do it. <laughs> Realistically, there's nothing wrong with this quad. For the money, for the price, for the fun factor, oh. I, it's thumbs up all day long. Yeah, for the price of this thing, I, I think it's going to be hard to beat. I'm going to say this is probably, you know, the Wizard was great a year or two ago. Two years ago. Um, is there third now, year? if anybody's at, when they, you know, if anybody asks me what should I get kind of thing, I want to start into FPV, but I don't want a brush quad. I want something brushless. I'm going to fly it in my yard. I'm going to fly it outside. Uh, these all day long. You nice. can tell we can ramble all day long about these quads. They're absolutely, absolutely our favorites. Um, yeah, pretty much, I'm gonna go ahead and make a general statement. If you're looking into getting FPV quads, you want a brushless quad, you don't necessarily, you want something you can fly in smaller areas, um, don't look any farther. Just get the Get this, one. get it, and then, uh, yeah. That's and that's it. a pretty bold statement for me, because usually I'll complain about everything. He complains so, about everything. Um, I'm pretty Guys, so we hope you thoroughly enjoyed this opening review of the ET-115 V2. 3-cell. Um, next video, we'll definitely do a video on how to bind it because it's not a true XM receiver. It yeah, is a, it's a different receiver, right. so we'll show a binding video on that. And um, then for those Spectrum guys, we'll show you how to bind the Spectrum version too. Well, what else you want us to do with them? Comment below and uh, let us know what you want to see next on the V2s because they're awesome. All right, hopefully you guys see uh, the rambling that we actually like it and it's kind of hard to not just go out and fly it. Right, so. although our batteries are charging, so yeah. we gotta go. Thank